Hi guys, welcome to Exploring Light. I am Sandeep Mathur, a landscape photographer based out of Delhi. Today I am going to share with you three techniques that I use to add light to my images in Adobe Photoshop. But before we move on, can I please request you to like, share and subscribe Exploring Light. Hello guys. We are now in Adobe Photoshop and uh, let's uh, look at the first example. This is the beautiful Godafoss from Iceland. I was there on an early morning shoot and uh, let's look at the edit. This is the raw image after uh, my raw development in Lightroom. I added my color and contrast adjustments in Photoshop and then finally just to uh, as a final step added this uh, this light to this image so if you look at this we have the source like like the sun uh, and a glow around the sun so without wasting any more time let's have a look at how i added this light let me uh, delete this adjustment so that we can start afresh and the first step is to start with a new blank layer so i click on this plus icon uh, to bring up a new blank layer and B for brush and I make sure that my brush size is between 175 to 200 say yeah, something like 200 is fine for this example and I press the alt click to bring up the color uh, eyedropper tool and this will allow me to sample the color from this area I want the color to be as close as possible to the, the little light that you can see through the clouds. If you know your way around the color spot, you will know that H stands for hue, which is at 41, saturation at 46, brightness is 92. These are pretty good numbers, but let, let's just uh, make them round numbers uh, for convenience sake. So we make the hue 40, make the saturation 50, and let's make the brightness 100. And the first step is to find the likely spot for the sun. And let's pick on this point here. Just one single dab, that's enough. And let me change the blend mode to linear dodge. After that, I duplicate the layer by using Control J. And uh, for now, let's switch off this uh, duplicate layer and work with the uh, original layer that we created. First, we bring up the hue and saturation layer, and we want this hue and saturation layer to work exclusively on the layer below. We don't want it to affect the whole image, so we clip it onto this uh, layer. Let's check the colorize box, and immediately you will notice the hue uh, shifts to 40, which is what we had selected, and increase the saturation right up to 100. Then we try and play with this uh, lightness slider to get some color into our sun. So something like 20, 20 to 25 looks fine. Let's call it 23 for this, for this example. And that looks fine to me. Let's group these two layers for organization's sake. And let's switch on the duplicate layer. Now the duplicate layer is going to be used to form the glow. So the way to do it is press Ctrl T to bring up the transform tool and let's drag this glow. But you will notice the moment I start dragging this marquee, the center reference point shifts and we don't want that. So to avoid that, press Alt and that will make the, uh, that will fix the center reference point and then you can drag away to all you like. And let's make this glow really, really large. Like so. And press OK. Again, uh, I know this does not look uh, good. So we again pull up a uh, hue and saturation layer, clip it onto this layer, colorize, increase the saturation to 100, and play with the, uh, with the lightness to get some color into our glow. 
so you know what guys i'm going to go a little beyond what i normally would do just to make sure that you see it so let's say 70 but i yeah let's say 70 okay let's stick to 72 and again we can play with the fill tool to make it look good i think somewhere around 75 looks okay too and again we group these two layers and group the group it along with the sun layer so that my friends is our glow but i will now teach you a simple technique to really uh, blend this uh, glow into the image uh, if you guys are familiar with luminosity mask that makes our life much easier i use uh, lumenzia with uh, from greg pens and i also use tony koiper's um, tk panel so let's uh, pull up a lights one mask and apply and you will see that really blends the glow into the image and see that that's beautifully blended if you guys don't use uh, uh, luminosity mask i can teach you another way to do it pull up a mask uh, and as you might remember white reveals and black hides so we want the white side up so that the glow is revealed go to image and use apply image and just make sure the uh, settings are pretty much what i have here uh, ensure that the invert box is not checked because if you check the invert box that means the effect will apply on the shadow areas and that is not what we want we want this to apply on the light areas of the image so uncheck the invert and press ok and this will take some time and there, there it is that's our uh, light glow the sun and the light glow over coat of us and you can also if you want to take it further you can uh, have a look at the mask and you can use your burn tool to make some adjustments uh, to this image make sure the range is shadow and exposure is 10 percent no not beyond this and you can just make sure you darken these these areas in your mask where which are not supposed to get the light and that will help you to blend this image a little further i think that looks okay for me that's the first technique that i use to add light to this image and let's now move on to the next image now let's have a look at the second technique that i use to add light to my images this is the beautiful kirkufell in iceland and um, let's have a look at my edits this is the image after raw development in lightroom then i bring it to adobe photoshop to add color and contrast adjustments and then finally as the final step in, in the post processing i add this light to this image it's a very subtle glow so uh, when i do this example in front of you i'll make sure i accentuate it a little bit so that you can see it clearly but the idea is to have a subtle glow in this image and not over the top so let me first delete this adjustment uh, and add a blank new layer like we always do b for brush and use alt to bring up the color dropper tool uh, sample the color where we believe the sunset would be happening and let's have a look at the color so this is at 55 which is a little high the hue is at it's moving more towards the greens than the yellows so let's change this to 45 let's increase the saturation to say 30 and the brightness can stay at 100 next step is to bring up uh, the gradient uh, fill tool we have to make two small adjustments in this the style would be changed to radial and let's increase the angle to something like zero or as close to zero as we can get you don't have to obsess over it but okay now this allows us to move this uh, glow to wherever we want in this image let's try and place this exactly where we believe the sunset was happening and click ok after this we change the blend mode to soft light and 
reduce the opacity to somewhere between 40 to 45. I think it should look good for this image. There you go. And really, friends, that's it to it. It's really my favorite way to add light to my images. So let's have a look at the next technique in the next example. We are now in the final uh, technique on how I add light to my images. And this is the beautiful view from uh, Victoria Peak looking towards Hong Kong. Uh, this is an immensely popular spot for photographers. And this is a shot of early morning sunrise. The sun was rising from here. So this is the image developed in uh, Lightroom. And then I bring it over to Adobe Photoshop to add my color and contrast adjustments. And as a final step, I add this light to this image. Uh, these rays, uh, a lot of photographers refer to them as um, God's rays. And uh, it just adds another dimension to the image. So let's have a look at how I add these, uh, these God's rays as they are called. The first step is to add a blank new layer and use the B for brush tool. Press Alt to bring the eyedropper tool and let's sample the color somewhere here. So these are pretty good numbers. I think we can live with them, but let's make it 45 and 50 and brightness 100. Let me switch off my speakers so that we don't get that annoying ding. Let's go to the gradient tool and we must use uh, this uh, preset. In the basics panel, you'll find this preset foreground to transparent. Yeah, foreground to transparent. Let's pick this uh, preset and we are going to use the radial gradient tool today. Opacity around say 30%. That looks good. And let's pick out a really big gradient to cover most of the image. That's it. Let's duplicate this layer, Control J, and let's change the blend mode of the duplicate layer to, to overlay. Reduce the opacity to somewhere around 70, and let's reduce the opacity of the normal layer, the original layer, to about 35. Okay, and that adds a nice subtle glow to the image, as you can see. But let's take it up another notch. So add black's mask to hide the, the glow. And let's pick out a brush. You, if, you, if you go on the web and search for uh, light ray brushes, you should come across various options for, for these brushes. And the ones that I use are from, uh, from Kevin Hoy. And I can leave a link below for you to to download these brushes and let's select a brush from from this panel and i think this looks it should be okay let's change the angle of the brush to somewhere around say 50 yeah and all we do is make sure the foreground is white all we do is click Okay, that looks good, but I'm not really satisfied with that uh, angle. So let's change this angle. Right click to bring up the brush panel and let's change it to somewhere here. Yeah, that looks, yeah, that looks good. And that's it. It's that simple, guys. You've added God's rays to your image. And it just looks fantastic and uh, takes the image to another level. There's, uh, there's a wow factor to this. Well, I hope you liked my series on um, adding light to your images. And if you use any of these techniques in your images, I would love to see them. Please post them on our Exploring Light Facebook group and uh, tag me so that I can look at it and comment on it. Thank you guys, thanks, thanks for listening in and uh, hope to catch you soon in a similar tutorial very soon.